Okay, North is dealer. Let's have a look what they've got. So, North has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. Flat 5 count. Nothing much to do here. As the dealer, you should pass. Okay, let's see what East has got. Hmm. So East has got nine, 18 points. Uh, 5, 4, 3, 1 shapes. This is an unbalanced hand. Um, with an unbalanced hand, unless it's strong enough to open two clubs, which this isn't, um, you want about 20 or more points to open two clubs with an unbalanced hand. So with this 18 points, I would start with one diamond and look to rebid my clubs to show 5, 4 on the next round, um, depending on our partner responding. So I'd start with one diamond for now. Okay, South's cards. South's got very little as well, looks a bit uh, east-west this hand. South's have only got two points, so it looks like um, North-South aren't going to be entering the bidding. This is an easy pass. Okay, now West responding to one diamond from their partner. Okay, West has got a lot of points as well. West has 14, 15 points in total. Um, now the important thing here is when you're a responder, you are not... Uh, in a position where you have to jump. You don't have to show a strong hand straight away. So we don't have to jump to four hearts or even two hearts or three hearts. If we bid a new suit um, in response to East's opening bid, it is a forcing bid. So if we bid one heart, for example, our partner will have to bid again. So there's no need to jump around or, or get kind of excited at this stage. So one heart, a simple one heart, is the correct response on this hand. Okay, so North-South have got nothing in their hands, they've got no long suit, no points to bid at all, so it's going to be an East-West only auction, so North-South are passing throughout from now on. Just about how East-West are going to find their contract. Um, with 18 points opposite 15, it's feeling like a slam is on, but obviously East-West need to navigate their way to the correct slam. Um, so, back to East hand. East has five diamonds, four clubs, an unbalanced hand, as we spoke about earlier. So... We need, to, we need to bid our second suit. Unsurprisingly, uh, our partners responded in the suit we have a singleton in, which is um, what tends to happen. So we need to bid our second suit to show our unbalanced hand. But if we bid two clubs, that would show five diamonds and four clubs, which is true. But it wouldn't show a very good opening hand. It would show a minimum opening hand. So we need to jump in the bidding to show our strength. Whenever you've got sort of 17, 18, 19-ish points, top end of your opening range for a one-level bid, you want to jump with your second bid. Um, so in this instance, we're jumping to three clubs to show our 5-4 shape. Okay, so West has now seen their partner jump bid in, uh, in clubs. So that shows five diamonds, four clubs, and a good opening hand. Um, so with our 15 points opposite good opening hand there, sort of top of their range, we are now firmly in slam territory. We know our, our team has at least 30, well even more than 30 points between the two hands. So... We know about a slam, but that doesn't mean you just bid four no trumps as soon as you think a slam is on, because we'd still like to find a fit. We pr preferably play in uh, hearts or spades, of course, um, but even so, we might play in diamonds or clubs if we've got a fit there, if it means the slam is easier. Um, not often you play in a minor, but if you have a fit there, you tend to want to try to play in it if it's a slam, because it's easier than a no trump slam. So in this instance, we have a six card heart suit. We still want to try to push for hearts to be trumps. Um, our partner has five diamonds, four clubs, but they might have two or three hearts. We know they don't have four hearts because they would have supported our hearts in preference to bidding clubs. So, but they might have two or three hearts, in which case hearts could still be trumps. Um, so in this instance, I would rebid the hearts. I would rebid at the three level. You don't have to jump to four hearts again. I would rebid at the three level. Um, the reason you can rebid at the three level is because your partner has made a forcing bid. So they've got a good hand. So they're not going to let it go in three hearts. So that's what I would do. Okay, um, so our partners rebid hearts. As a responder, whenever they rebid a suit, there should be a six-card suit. So obviously our partner is looking for a heart fit, um, which we don't have, unless, of course, they've got seven hearts, which they, we, haven't, we don't yet know about. Um, with our number of points, we have shown a good hand. We haven't really got anything extra to say with regards to shape. The only thing that we do have that our partner doesn't necessarily know about is a stopper in the spades. So typically when you have minor, minor orientated hand, you tend to want to play in a no trump contract. Now, as we've just seen with West hand, um, it looks like West is pushing for a slam, but we don't know that as East. We've shown our strength, our partner's rebid the hearts looking for a heart fit. We don't have a heart fit. So it would appear to me now that we should, we should return to no trumps. If we didn't have a spade stopper, we would have to bid one of our minors, denying a heart fit and denying a spade stopper. Um, but given that we've shown five diamonds, four clubs here already... 
I think it makes sense to bid 3 no trumps now, showing a stopper in the unbid suit, in this case that is spades. So that's what I would do, is 3 no trumps. Okay, um, West is sort of in the driving seat here, because East has shown their strength, and now appears to be trying to play in 3 no trumps, which, uh, which shows a spades stopper. Now, West knows obviously we've got too many points to just play in game, so pass would definitely be the wrong bid, because you're going to make far too many tricks for 3 no trumps. So there's two schools of thought here. The first one is, we could just bid six no trumps. Our partner's got enough points plus our points to, to merit a, a reasonable go at six no trumps. The other thought is, we could actually play in diamonds. Our partner has promised us five diamonds, we've got three, that makes an eight card fit. So we could play in, in, a, in a diamond contract. We'd like to play more than five, obviously. Um, but getting across to our partner that we're interested in a diamond slam is something that requires a partnership agreement. If we just, I mean, six no trumps will be a reasonable bid. If we just bid six no trumps, that's perfectly fine. Um, albeit somewhat hasty, because there might be a grand slam on in diamonds. That's why I'm tempted by this diamond fit, because we've got ace king, ace king, which are very good cards for slams, and we've got enough points to suggest a, a grand slam may well be on um, with the diamond fit that we've got. And we've got shortage in our partner's um, second suit, which helps them rough losers in clubs, should they have any. So I personally now would bid four diamonds, which in my partnership agreement would show a diamond fit and a diamond slam interest. Obviously you need that agreement in place, because if you bid four diamonds and they pass, you'll feel very sad. But because our partner has bid a game contract, we should not be stopping below game. And therefore four diamonds is a stronger bid than five diamonds, because four diamonds is not game and therefore the bidding must continue, is the understanding between the two players. So I would bid four diamonds, which looks for a diamond slam. But I think six no trumps is a reasonable bid if you're on uncertain ground as to whether four diamonds is a diamond slam interest or not. But I personally would bid four diamonds. Okay, so our partner's just bid four diamonds, which isn't game, and they could have passed and let us in three no trumps. Or similar, they could have bid five diamonds and put us in game in diamonds. So that bid must be a slam on orientated bid. They can't want to play in four diamonds, that doesn't make sense. They, if, they had, if they had a weak hand, they would simply pass three no trumps and or bid five diamonds, depending on what their shape was suggesting. So this is a stronger bid than five diamonds, uh, and obviously a stronger bid than pass. So it's a slam-orientated bid. Now obviously our hand looks rather slammy, we've got a single turn, we've got 18 points, we've got a lot of controls, uh, ace-king, ace-king... Is all really good for slams. Jacks tend not to be as, as worthwhile when you get to the slam territory, whereas we've got a lot of firepower in our suits, which is very useful. Um, so I, I'm interested in a diamond slam. I, I think that looks a reasonable bet. So there are, there are two ways to kind of continue the slam-orientated bidding, um, and one way to shut it down. The way to shut the bidding down will be to bid five diamonds, which says, go away, basically, um, which I don't think is right, because our hand's too good. Um, so the other, the other way to continue the slam bidding, one way would be to make a control bid, so that would be to show an ace in a side suit. Um, in that instance we would be bidding four spades with this hand to show the ace of spades um, and a, a, a diamond interest, a slam, slam interest in diamonds rather. Um, the other way to show a slam interest is bid four no trumps, the classic uh, four no trumps route. Now the reason I would opt for four no trumps with this hand is because we know that our trumps are very good quality. We've got ace, king, queen of trumps, so we're not worried about the trump suit. Um, we simply need to know, does our partner have the ace of hearts and the ace of clubs? Because if they have both of those aces, we look like we're cooking on gas here. Um, so I would take the reins here and I would bid four no trumps myself. Four spades isn't a wrong bid, but it, it mean, then means our partner has to bid four no trumps, and it's difficult to get across the quality of our trumps. So I would bid four no trumps with this hand. Okay, so partner's bid four no trumps, which is the classic uh, ace asking bid. Now it depends on what version of four no trumps you're playing. You could be playing regular Blackwood, you could be playing Roman Keycard, you could be playing simply Keycard. There are all different versions. Uh, my favourite version is Roman Keycard, which incorporates the king and queen of trumps in the, the ace ask question. Um, but obviously your response might vary here depending on what version you're playing. But the version I'm playing, which is Roman Keycard, um, this hand has two key cards. That's the ace of clubs and the ace of hearts. Important to notice, diamonds are trumps, not hearts. So this is not a key card. This king of hearts is not a key card because hearts are not trumps. Diamonds are trumps. Um, so these two key cards, the ace of that and the ace of that, um, means that we should be responding five hearts. Five hearts shows two key cards but denies the queen of trumps. That's playing Roman key card. If you were playing a regular Blackwood, five hearts would show two aces. So coincidentally, we're making the same bid here. But playing Roman key card, this shows two key cards without the queen of trumps.
So, playing regular Blackwood or playing Roman key card, five hearts is a very, very good response for us. That shows us two key cards or two aces. Um, either way, it must be the ace of hearts and the ace of clubs. So our partner's represented a hand there that has the aces that we are missing. So now we're looking at a position where actually we don't have any losers in hearts. It's likely we don't have any losers in clubs. So the only really thing we need, we need from our partner is some kings to deal with our small spades. It's possible that there is a, a slow club loser, the fourth club. And there's possible a slow spade loser if our partner's got, let's say, king to three spades. So I would ask our partner for kings now. I'm thinking of grand slam, not just bidding six diamonds, but rather thinking of seven diamonds. And that's because we have all of the aces in the deck. I can't envisage a position where we're going to lose two tricks, basically, because we have everything so far. We just need a couple of kings from partner, and we will have a grand slam on. So I would bid five no trumps now, which looks for side suit kings. Side suit kings because the king of trumps was incorporated in four no trumps playing Roman key card. So playing Roman key card with four no trumps means that when you bid five no trumps, there are only three kings left because Roman key card incorporates the king of trumps. So it's a side suit king ask. That means how many kings of the other three suits do you have? So there's only three kings in total, if you like. And that would be the king of clubs, the king of hearts, and the king of spades in this instance. And the responses are much more straightforward responding to kings when you're playing four no trumps as Roman key card. It's simply six clubs is none of the side suit kings, six diamonds is one, six hearts is two, and six spades is all three. So we have two of the three side suit kings. We've got the king of hearts and the king of spades. So therefore I would respond six hearts, which says I have two of the three. Okay, so... Um, Partner has responded to our 5 no trump bid, showing two of the three side suit kings. So our partner has the ace-king of hearts, the ace of clubs, and the king of spades. So they have absolutely everything that we are missing. So our decision now is which grand slam to bid. We should not be trying to bid six no trumps here, because that would be wimpish, given that we have every single ace and king that we, we need. Well, every single ace and king. Um, so, it's between seven diamonds and seven no trumps. Now, the small risk with seven no trumps would be that we might not quite have 13 top, top tricks without roughing a club or without roughing hearts over here. So, whenever you're about to bid a grand slam, it tends to work best if you bid the safest one. And the safest one is almost always in, in trumps. Obviously, there's the slight chance that trumps break badly, or there's the chance that there's a void and they manage to get a rough on the opening lead, but basically, trump contracts work in a more safe manner than no trumps. So I, I would opt for the Grand Slam in diamonds here, and therefore would bid seven diamonds, which should end the bidding. Okay, um, we are in lead to a Grand Slam, which is not often a good position to be in. Um, you tend to want to try to avoid giving tricks away, if at all you can. So the suits I would avoid um, would be the hearts, because our dummy has bid hearts several times, and we've got the queen of hearts, so we might end up making the queen of hearts, albeit that's an unrealistic thing to be hopeful of. Um, I would also avoid leading clubs, because clubs was declarer's second suit, so we might be doing some kind of finesse for them if our partner's got, let's say, the queen of clubs or the jack of clubs or something, where the declarer needs to find it. Um, Leading a trump isn't unreasonable, because we know they've got a trump fit, we know the trumps are breaking, because we've got two, so leading a trump is not an unreasonable thing. However, I would probably opt for leading the unbid suit. Now, we know the, the opponents have the ace of spades, we know that, or avoiding spades, I suppose. Um, but leading a spade simply doesn't look like it's going to cost as many tricks, so I would opt for a spade lead. And given that our spades are so poor, I would opt for a second second spade from our four card spade holding because if we let a low spade that would imply an honor to our partner i suppose our partner probably isn't going to care because their hand is equally as poor as ours we are imagining um but it's good to try and do the correct lead correct card that is so i would opt for the seven of spades as the opening card okay um we are the dummy so down goes the dummy two aces and two kings as priced Okay, so good practice as always is to think about the contract at the very first lead card. Now we know this spade lead is safe, we've got the ace and the king and we've got no more spades on the dummy. So the spade losers are not a problem. So it's okay to play a small spade and win our ace, etc, etc. But we need to think about the whole hand. What are we doing? Are we drawing the trumps? Are we setting the heart suit up? Are we looking at our losers in our hand, in the dummy, etc. So there are essentially two ways to play this contract, neither of which are guaranteed, I should, I should stress. Um, 
One way is to set our own hand up. So looking at our own hand, the losers we have are, we assume no losers in the diamond suit. If the diamonds are breaking badly, we're in big trouble, basically. So we need the diamonds to break. So if there's no losers here, um, we've got a couple of, well, we've got one loser in the clubs. The ace will deal with one of these small clubs. We need to do something with that other small club. We've got no losers in the hearts. And we've got one overhanging spade. With the king will deal with one of them. We've got another spade problem there. Now, looking at the dummy, we've got the ace king of hearts. So the ace of hearts and the king of hearts, we can throw away one of these small black card losers. Um, so what we could do is maximize the shortage on the dummy to try and trump one of these losers. Notice we've got a doubleton in both spades and clubs. So we could clear dummy of spades and then trump the third round of spades here, which would get rid of that loser there. And then this loser here could go on the ace king of hearts, or rather the king of hearts. We do still need the diamonds to break though, so when we play ace, king, queen of diamonds, we need either the diamonds to be 3-2, or we need the jack of diamonds to be singleton. If the jack of diamonds is with three other cards, we are going to have a problem. Now, interestingly, if the jack of diamonds is with three other cards on our right hand side, we could finesse it by playing the 10 from the dummy and trapping the jack underneath our ace, king, queen, 9. If the jack of diamonds is with three cards or more on our left hand side, we are losing a trick to the jack of diamonds. So we need the diamonds to behave in a reasonably friendly manner. If they are really badly breaking, especially if South has a lot of diamonds, we're going off. It's as simple as that. Um, the other way to play the contract would be to establish the dummy. Instead of establishing our hand as high, we could establish the dummy. And we would do that by setting those hearts up. So what we would do in that instance, is we would draw the trumps, again hoping for a friendly diamond break. We would then play ace, king of hearts, trump a heart over here, go back to the dummy, trump another heart over here. And in that time, we would hope that all the hearts have been played by the opponents. Um, it's so that that heart suit is essentially established as winners. We would need a few entries to the dummy to do that, because we need to go over there, trump a heart, go over there, trump a heart, go over there, and then play the hearts as winners. So instinctively, um, it looks safer to try and set this hand up, because you simply have to do one rough to set this hand up, whereas over there you need a, a friendly-ish heartbreak. You need hearts to be at least 4-2, and you've got some, some entry concerns. So I would try and set this hand up. Again, we do need a friendly diamond break to do that there. So I would play a small spade from the dummy. There's the outside chance that this ten of spades becomes a trick, but it's looking more likely that we're going to end up wanting to uh, rough that spade on the dummy. I'd play a small spade because there is a very, very small chance that the ten of spades wins a trick one, um, which solves all our problems. So I would play this small spade. Okay, operating on the third hand high principle, um, we want to play a high card here. If we don't play a big card, Declarer will win something cheap, something like the eight or the ten or, or something like that. Um, we would like to force Declarer to play the ace, basically. We know Declarer's got the ace of spades, our partner wouldn't underlead it. So we need to force them to play the ace. It's good practice here to play bottom of touching cards when you're following suit. And when you're leading the suit, you go top of touching cards. It's good defensive practice to keep doing that. So when you play the jack of spades and Declarer plays the ace of spades, your partner has some inkling that you have the queen of spades. It's not guaranteed. Declarer could play the ace when they have the ace and the queen. Um, but it's better practice, whereas if you play the queen, in theory that denies the jack when you're following suit. So when you're leading, you go top down. When you're following, you go bottom up. So here I would play the jack of spades, simply to force the ace of spades from the declarer. Okay, so we need to play the ace of spades on this trick, otherwise we lose a trick, and that's bad when we're in seven diamonds. So ace of spades on this trick, that's straightforward, win the trick. Unfortunately for us, we didn't win the uh, ten of spades. There you go. Now... What we would like to do, because we're setting our hand up, we want to try to rough one of these black losers, uh, either a club or a small spade, in the, um, in the dummy, exploiting that shortage. Because we want to rough a trick, we can't afford to draw all of the trumps. We want to rough once in the dummy. Therefore, we can afford to draw two rounds of trumps, but not three rounds of trumps. If you draw three rounds of trumps, you're going to have to rely on the hearts coming in uh, to discard a loser. Whereas we actually want to take the more safe route of just roughing a, a loser in the dummy. So we can afford to draw two rounds of trumps. Of course we might see the jack of diamonds, that would be nice. Um, we might not, depends how the diamonds are behaving. Um, but once we've drawn two rounds of trumps, we then need to rough one of our losers in the dummy before drawing that final round of trumps. Again, we need the diamonds to break, therefore one, we're in trouble. So I'd play the ace king of diamonds, which draws two diamonds from south, two diamonds from the dummy, and two diamonds from north. So that means 
a good thing. That means the diamonds have broken 3-2, because both, de both defenders followed to those diamonds, which means that we are going to be able to fell the jack of diamonds in a moment. When we play our queen of diamonds, one opponent, whoever it is, will have the jack of diamonds left only, so we're going to be able to kill that jack of diamonds. But we can't afford to do that yet, because we need that diamond on the dummy to rough the, the third round of whether it's clubs or spades. Now, choosing between whether we want to rough clubs or spades... Uh, roughing spades is safer. The reason roughing spades is safer is because we have fewer of them. We've only got, we started with three spades in hand and two spades in the dummy, which means the opponent started with eight spades in total. Whereas we've got six clubs, which means the opponent started with only seven of them. So this contract is looking pretty safe now. The only time it goes wrong is where if when we rough on the dummy, North is the person with the jack of diamonds, which they might not be, and they then over-rough us. So the safest rough to take is the spade rough, and then we're going to look to throw our club loser away on that overhanging king of hearts in a minute. So to take that spade rough, what we want to do is play a spade, they follow small, we win the king, and they play something small, like that. Now we're in the dummy. What we'd like to be is in hand, because when we're in hand, we can then rough that spade. So we need to get back to hand. The safest way to get back to hand is a small club. We don't really want to play ace of hearts and rough a heart, because again, we might get over roughed if things are very, very badly breaking. Um, so we need to play a small club. This could go wrong if the clubs are 7 nil, but that would be very, very unlucky. So a small club. Second hand plays low, so they play a low club. We win the king, or the queen, either's fine. Um, and they play a low club. Now, importantly, we've now got the lead back in our hand. So because we're back in our hand, we can now rough that spade loser. So we play a spade, they play low, and we now trump it in the dummy with this importantly saved trump. This could go wrong if the spades are 6-2 and the person with the two spades also has the jack of diamonds. This could go wrong if North, for example, had run out of spades at this stage. But that would be quite unlucky. A 6-2 break is quite unlikely. So... They would follow suit with the spade, because they have to. And now we are on the dummy. We would like to get back to our hand. Now, the only way to get back to our hand, really, is with a, uh, a heart rough, because our club entry has already been used to rough that spade. So again, we're going to have to take a small risk here. The small risk is that we're going to have to play ace of hearts and trump a heart, and hope that the hearts are not... Um, five one, the person with the singleton having the jack of diamonds. So again, we could come a cropper here if if the suits are breaking really badly, but it would be exceptionally unlucky. Um, but we need to get back here to draw that last trump to stop anything bad happening when we're cashing our winners. So the ace of hearts first, getting rid of our heart singleton. They follow small, small, and small, and then. We play a low heart to our hand. We don't need to cash the king of hearts first. We can do that in a minute when we go over there with the ace of clubs. Roughing a heart on the second round is slightly safer than roughing it on the third round because someone might have run out by the third round. Low heart, low heart, trump, low heart. That gets us to hand. And that's an important thing because now we can draw that final trump. We've been waiting to do that for a while but we couldn't afford to do it straight away because we needed to rough that spade. So queen of diamonds, they discard something irrelevant, you discard a small heart, you need to keep your ace of clubs, and they play the jack of diamonds. So we've now drawn the last trump. Now we are in hand still, because we've just drawn the last trump. Now we can go over to the dummy with the ace of clubs and throw away this losing club on that king of hearts. That's the trick we've been kind of saving right for the end. That was one of the losers we needed to discard, the other one being the spade that we, that we roughed. So over with the ace of clubs... They play clubs, and then you play the king of hearts, they play a heart, you throw away this club loser because that's a winner. Now coincidentally the queen of hearts appears here, now you don't need that, you don't need these two to be winners um, because these are two are winners. So if the queen of hearts hadn't appeared at this stage we would still be making all the tricks because this is a trump and this is a master club. As it happens we've now got boss, hat, boss tricks in both hands, so we've, if you like got four tricks at this stage. Um, but we didn't need that Queen of Hearts to appear because we could then, imagining the Queen of Hearts hadn't appeared, which obviously that makes it easy, we could then rough this heart to hand and then play the Queen of Clubs as our last trick as a winner. So slightly tricky, we need the diamonds to break nicely and we needed to recognise that we needed to rough that spade early before drawing all of the trumps for 13 tricks.